All right, good morning and afternoon, everyone. Welcome to today's Demo Jam. Today's Demo Jam is going to be featuring five amazing apps, and we're going to go ahead and get started. My name is Joshua Hoskins. I'm from Talent River, and I am a Salesforce MVP, recently renewed. Hooray! And joining me today uh, is Mr. Salesforce MVP himself, Jeff Gross, and Jamanda Nelson from the App Exchange. Hey, Joshua, and yes, we do have an honorary J name. You'll start seeing some trending going on here within the Demo Jam, and we've renamed Amanda Nelson as Jamanda for the day, and actually I think we think we think that name will stick, but welcome to the Demo Jam, and we are excited to have you guys here today. Jamanda, say hi. Hello, everybody. I'm actually pretty excited. I've got a bunch of nicknames. I think this one's the newest, so uh, let's go with it. I won't feel out of the loop here with all the J names you guys are about to meet today. Exactly. Well, Joshua, tell us a little bit more about what today is going to be like. Sure. Will do. So uh, today's webinar first will be recorded and available on our YouTube channel in 24 hours. Um, also, please follow along using the app Demo Jam hashtag on Twitter. And feel free to ask any questions in the chat window or use Twitter, uh, or use twi Twitter uh, hashtag on Twitter <laughs> at Demo Jam to ask any questions. Uh, today's present, uh, presenters include Kanga, New Voice Media, Service Max, Velocity, and Z Zora. And uh, we're ready to get started. So, Jeff? Yeah, so here it is. There are three simple rules to the demo jam. Each demo can be no longer than three minutes, so they need to be to the point and show you the goods. Number two, there are no slides. This is 100% live demo. And thirdly, we're going to have one audience question from each of these demoers, and that is your chance to ask anything about these demos that you see today. So please, make use of the chat, make use of Twitter, and let people know what you'd like to know about their demos. So, without any further ado, Joshua, I'm going to hand it over to you for our first demo. Thanks, Jeff. First up, very well-known app is Conga Composer. So Conga has over 7,000 customers and over 600 five-star reviews. The Conga Suite is a powerful set of cloud-based applications designed for fast and flexible, but accurate, uh, utilization of Salesforce data. These products streamline the creation and distri distribution of Salesforce reports, customized presentations, and most of all, documents and multiple file formats. With this, you have an unlimited number of use cases that you can solve for all organizations and all industries. Joining us today is Gary from Conga, and Gary's going to walk us through Conga. Gary, you out there. Thanks, Josh. So as we can all attest, Salesforce is a fantastic tool for collecting data, making it available from any device. But there are some limitations in terms of exporting that data into useful documents. Conga can help bridge that gap by connecting to any object and delivering that information into professionally formatted files and reports for you. So what I'd like to demo today is a sales user's experience in a lightning interface where I'm trying to sell products to Burlington Textiles in an in-person sales call today. So in preparation for that meeting, I'd like to put together a summary document that has all of my relevant information from the account, including all of the related list information. I can accomplish that by just clicking a single button where we'll let that run in the background to merge our document. And then inside of my meeting, I can take that document, the account summary, use it as a cheat sheet to answer any questions that my, my prospect might have. Then my prospect, uh, after answering all those questions, would then might potentially be interested in seeing a proposal. And in that proposal, I can fire off a quick email that has the proposal attached to it, which I'll do right now. And that proposal will be emailed directly across the desk to our prospect. And then finally, after I've had a chance to sit down with my prospect and go through all of the 
products that we've attached to that opportunity, they might want to see a contract with all of our T's and C's so that we can start doing business together today. I can fire off another button off of an opportunity object here, which is merge in DocuSign, which will merge a conga document and seamlessly integrate that with DocuSign. And uh, we can sign that deal and get it done today. So in terms of the output files, let me pull these up. The first document that we had pulled up is our account brief that pulls together a nicely branded document with a professional look and feel. It's got our primary contact information, some account information, a clickable hyperlink, the API Google Maps image in case that's helpful for me, and then all related list information that's relevant to me too. So I had my contacts, cases, opportunities, and projects. Then let's switch over to where I had emailed the proposal. In this case, I have a nicely branded email where I've got related list information coming in relevant to my opportunity. I've got summary information merging directly into my professional looking email. And then attached to it is the proposal that contains all of the products and their images that we had discussed in our meeting. Then finally, we've got our DocuSign button that I had fired off. And I've programmed this button to give us a preview of that document so that we can review all of the content prior to firing it off. So all this looks great. I can then click continue. That'll generate the DocuSign envelope. And I can confirm that the recipients that were predetermined is appropriate as well. And then I can send off that DocuSign envelope. And just like that, we're able to close business in person. So I'd encourage just in the nick of time. Thanks so much, Gary, for that. J Gary, as we should say. Um, so, you know what? There's a couple of great points that you mentioned. The first thing that you mentioned um, and that we were able to see is the, the new Lightning interface. And so being able to see Conga um, directly working the Lightning experts, you definitely get some cool points for that. But it's all available in, in <laughs> one section. <laughs> it's all available in one section. It's very easy. It's very streamlined. And one thing that I really liked about that is it was a pixel perfect document that you actually rendered. It doesn't get better than that. I mean, pixel perfect, the ability to send an email and the ability to even integrate with DocuSign is just seamless. So thanks for that, Jagari. Absolutely. Um, Thank you for those Amanda, comments. Amanda, what questions do we have from the audience? Sure. Um, we're curious um, about how you use Conga outside of sales. Um, so outside of sales, where do other customers or how do customers use Conga? Yeah, that's a fantastic question. And what I demoed today was basically that sales experience where you can do contract proposals and then some e-signature pieces as well. But we really like to look at our tool as a utility or even a platform that allows you to merge data from any object in Salesforce. So pretty much any object that Salesforce allows us to get to, we could either write a report or a query to connect to that information and then merge that into an output file of your choice. So if you're using Excel files or Word documents, PowerPoint presentations, PDF files, or even HTML email templates like I demoed just a moment ago. But yeah, any object in Salesforce, uh, any process that you've got built out, we would certainly encourage you to try to connect our product to it. Awesome. Thanks. All right, so over to another set of J's. I think we've got a Jeff and potentially maybe another J presenting. Over to you, Jeff. You know, here's the deal, Joshua. I was just going to say that there was a time that I actually held a an honor with uh, Conga. At the time, I had been the craziest Conga form generator guy. This is back in 2008, so this is going back a long time, but I had the original first most complicated conga doc ever put together. So uh, not too long after that, I was unseated from that, but hey, just, just nice to have a connection to those guys. So as we move on next, we've got New Voice Media. Now, if you guys don't know who New Voice Media is, they are the highest rated telephony application out there on the App Exchange. They've got 225 reviews and an average of 4.9 out of 5 stars. I mean, that is huge. They offer call centers and inside sales software that's designed specifically for Salesforce, giving sales and service organizations the ability to instantly connect their agents and prospects to customers over the phone through email and via social channels. That's the thing. These guys have all those channels together. New Voice Media is also one of our one of the platinum ISV partners of Salesforce.com. 
Actually, sorry, I didn't. I just threw that .com on there. I got to remember not to say that. Let me introduce you guys to Jason Fowler. He is regional vice president of sales engineering at New Voice Media. Jason has been in telephony space for over 20 years. Lives in Dallas. He's got a wife and a newborn daughter of three months, and two bulldogs that are named Lloyd and Elliot. Jason, you out there? I sure am. Thank you, Jeff. Let's do it. As Jeff just said, New Voice Media is a contact center and inside sales platform that was designed specifically for Salesforce and only Salesforce. We help your sales and service teams connect with more prospects and resolve more problems, never having to leave Salesforce. And because we log all of the information about those interactions within Salesforce, management will have all the data they need to measure productivity and improve customer satisfaction. There's no need to pull reports from an external system to understand what's going on in the organization. Here we have the new voice media contact pad. This is where I, as a salesperson or an agent, will be able to manage my status, whether it's on phone or off phone, and all these statuses can be configured specifically for your organization so that you can report on the activities that you need to see. This is our local presence function. This is what allows me, as someone in Dallas, to be able to call into any area and present a number that's local to the person I'm calling. That increases my chance for successful connect. In this case, we can do it both manually, as you see, or automatically by leveraging information on the record that we're calling from. This is our voicemail drop feature. This allows me as a salesperson to pre-record my voicemails, and as I'm prospecting and get into a prospect's voicemail box, all I have to do is drop that voicemail in, and I can immediately move on to the next call, saving me a lot of time and effort. This is our hot desking feature, and this allows us to be able to integrate with any existing telephony system, or mobile phone for that matter. All we need is a direct dial number, and we can deliver the phone call to that location. Right now, I've got a call waiting in queue. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ready. And as I do, you're going to see that I'm delivered a phone call immediately, along with a screen pop of the contact record associated with the caller ID of the caller. Now, we can do this with both standard objects within Salesforce and custom. We can also leverage any information on that record to be able to tailor that inbound experience for the caller. So for example, here we have support level. Are they a standard or a premium? We can play targeted audio just for premium clients or promote them to the head of the queue for faster service. Here's a delivery date. They're calling in wanting to know where their stuff is. We can play them that information without them ever needing to speak to an agent, which saves everybody a lot of time and money. This is a recent case. They call in. They want an update on their case. They can be delivered directly to their case owner without any intervention from the phone system. This is the ability for us to be able to do a survey. As you can see here, the last time the person that called in had a good survey, to which we chatter blasted that out to the team to let everybody know. We can also do this with bad surveys, allowing supervisors and managers to be able to act on bad interactions right away and address them. Also, automatically logging all of those activities right here for every interaction. So if I click into this, you'll be able to see things like who took the call, who made the call, the handle time, talk time, and start and end times down here. We're also instantiating here a link to the call recording right at the bottom of the activity record, which makes it very easy for me to be able to review previous conversations or using our handy dandy scorecard, do a QA on those conversations. So it's our ability to do this and do it quite easily. That's one of the reasons why we're the highest rated CTI app on the App Exchange. Thank you guys. You got in right under the line. And you know what? This is this is actually some really cool stuff. I've seen some other demos of of New Voice Media before, and here's the things that we saw today that, that really excite me. Number one, you've got that soft phone that's handy that you can easily go outbound. You can pick the number that's, or wait, you know, have it automatically decide the number that's closest to the person you're dialing, so you've already got that in place. The fact that as soon as that call rang in, you saw the product that that customer owns. And by the way, one other feature that I thought was extremely cool about New Voice Media is that you guys have the ability to understand who the customer is and let's say they're a, a new customer that's just gone live within the last 30 days you can actually have that bump up their priority in the queue so I mean that's just very cool stuff when it comes to contact center and being able to understand your customer provide better service to them and uh, an overall awesome experience for agents as well so thanks Jason that's awesome hey Jamanda have you got something out there for a question for Jason just uh, check it out. We sure do. Um, the first question for New Voice Media, does New Voice Media assist with setting up phone telephony or would a client hire a third party to link everything together? 
So we assist with all that. We can leverage your existing PBX, or we can provide you with your own dial tone, right? So if you've got disparate PBX systems across your entire organization, let's say you've grown through acquisition, and you've got several different PBXs, it doesn't matter to us. We can integrate with all of them, and we don't even need to have anything installed on site to do it. Awesome. That's awesome. All right. Thanks, Jason. Joshua, Before back. Sure. Thanks, Jeff. So next up, let me just make sure, is ServiceMax. Uh, so everyone say hello to ServiceMax. ServiceMax is the leader in field service management. They provide the first Internet of Things enabled cloud software for field service, and it delivers smart and proactive service. And this smart and proactive service empowers technicians in the field that have mobile-ready devices to streamline business processes within their organizations. ServiceMax customers like GE, Tyco, Sony, they all benefit from ServiceMax's significant domain experience in field service and see an average revenue growth of 22% or more. That's pretty amazing. So joining me from ServiceMax today, we have Jay. Jay, you out there? Hello, hello, here I am. All right. So thanks for joining us, Jay. And Jay's going to share a little bit about ServiceMax with us. Over to you, Jay. All right. Thanks, guys. Well, I just want to mention that I am Jay. I am the original Jay. So like uh, when it, they talk about this is sponsored by the letter J, that would be me, sponsored by us. So here we go with ServiceMax. ServiceMax is, as mentioned, the first IoT-enabled cloud software for field service and repair organizations. Now, I've got a lot to show. I'm not going to actually show most of it. I'm just going to show some things that I want you to focus on, which is number one, we work offline and mobile, and number two, we're focused on the uh, IoT and the asset enablement. So yeah, we've got a dashboard, and in my demo for a company, we've got a company called Millennial Health. They've got some emergency work orders. They've got some machines that are creating flashing red lights out in the field because they're phoning home and saying that they've got problems. They can automatically create work orders. This one's already, already been automatically created. We've got some countdown clocks sitting on their service level agreement. So everybody's focused on getting out there and fixing the problem as quickly as possible. And in fact, it's been automatically dispatched. That's all the stuff I'm not going to show you. What I'm really going to focus on is that mobile offline functionality. So we can take any, um, any object, any form, and make it mobile and offline, such as, for example, a work order. We can also connect any device that's out there, and if we're online, we can check out important information. We can search any object on the mobile device. So I can, in this case, search for installed products and take a look at all the products that a particular customer. Here's a product. It's um, a uh, PET machine, an MRI machine. We can go ahead and open up this product and see it in terms of the components inside by looking at the tree view. And I can see different information, such as on the left, all of the products at a particular site, Good Sam Hospital. I can see all the different components of it. I could even view machine data for my IoT, Internet of Things enabled machines. This, is, uh, this makes use of our pre-built integration with our partner, PTC. PTC will go ahead and uh, bring in any kind of data that, um, uh, that you have. And, all right, wouldn't be a real demo if it doesn't take too long to come in. Not sure what's going on there. Oh, there we go. It's loading up. Um, there we go. So it's pulling in real data such as temp temperature data from temperature sensors or vibration data from vibration sensors. So I can see exactly what's going on and help me diagnose the problem. Not only can I pull up information from the, from the uh, um, product view, I can take a look at what's been dispatched to me, open up work orders from my calendar, Go ahead and debrief them. debrief them. Now, this works online or offline. I can go ahead and add parts, scan these in through a barcode, or go ahead and pull them from an offline or online electronic database, add them, and create the work order, everything I need to do to get Time's something up. fixed. Time's up. All right. Thanks for, thanks for um, that try, Jay. Unfortunately, you're out of time. But I just want to recap some of the things that I thought that were really brilliant. 
um, about what you showed us today. The, the first thing is being Internet of Things enabled. So the fact that your software allows you know, devices uh, you know, by themselves to be able to identify problems. I think that that's a huge trend and it's, um, it's definitely where um, sort, sort of the, we're moving to. Um, the ability to be, be able to proactively know when a customer is having a problem or being able to experience an issue. The second thing is just the fact that you're mobile enabled. You know, I think when you're, when you're delivering service to a lot of customers, um, it's important that it connects to your CRM. And at any point in time, anyone in the organization can see a 360 degree view of that customer, the components that they have installed, maybe in the upsell opportunity, so that it actually reduces the actual time to repair. And also, let's, let's not forget, quick communication, so chatter enabled, um, and, and, um, and basically all of this is done through, through the tablet. So those are the highlights that I, I took away. Um, thank you very much. But I'd like to go to the audience and see if we have any questions. All Amanda? Right. Yes. Um, question is, can the technician manage a return from the field? Absolutely. So returns, parts, um, return parts or returned uh, inventory can be created um, from the field. We can create the uh, RMA. Um, and then can ship it back to our system and we'll manage the inventory levels automatically. All right, thank you very much for that. All right, next up, I'm gonna turn it back over to the other Jay, Jeff. Sounds good, Joshua, thank you, man. So next up, we've got Velocity. They are a strategic software partner of Salesforce.com and what they do is they provide industry-specific functionality for processing customer-centric industries on the Salesforce platform. So think about it as embedding domain expertise into four particular industries so far, which are insurance, health insurance, public sector, and communications. The most popular communications app on the App Exchange is Velocity. So today we've got with us another Jason. Jason Post this time. He's going to demonstrate Velocity's op the industry console specific to insurance and he's going to show us how that looks. Jason, over to you, man. Thank you, man. Anyway, Jason Post here. Today, I'm going to demo our service cloud for insurance. Walk through launching an auto insurance claim by a customer service agent. Then, we're going to switch roles as an administrator, making an edit in near real time to the form without having to write any code. You hear that? No more waiting for two-week sprints to make edits. So, let's start. Here, imagine you're a customer service agent assisting Preston Reed to file an auto claim. We're looking at Velocity Console for Insurance, running on Service Cloud. The Velocity Console contains a snapshot of Mr. Reed's vital info, timeline of his events and cases, and interactive cards. You may notice we've built Velocity Console on a responsive design framework in order to support omni-channel delivery. It can also be customized to match your company's style guide via HTML and CSS. Continuing our task, we open an interactive file from the auto insurance card with details about the policy and an action link to file a claim. Following that link, we launch a Velocity OmniScript form, our business process flow tool. Notice that link, it has data pre-filled such as name, policy number, and phone number. But you know what? Administrator forgot to include an email field in the OmniScript. So, let's switch hats. Let's imagine we're the administrator and fix it. And remember, no need to wait for downtime and sprint cycles. So here, as administrator, we have the Velocity OmniScript library, which are industry-specific flows for all sales and service. Some of these are pre-configured by Velocity, some would be developed by your team. This OmniScript, first notice of loss autoclaim is what we want. So opening that script, we can see each step in the guided process and can edit them by simply dragging and dropping. Here, under the insured step, we want to add email right under the phone number. So I'm going to drag the email field under phone number, change the element name to email, adjust the width, and you know what? Let's make this field required. Now let's activate the latest version of this script, making it live. Much better than waiting the two weeks for the next sprint release, right? So let's check out this new version. Go back to the console, relaunch the file acclaim OmniScript, and here's the new email field, pre-populated marked as required field. In closing, we saw Velocity Console for Insurance, 
and our guided interaction solution, OmniScript. Walk through how easy it is to launch and edit a script and make those changes without having to write any code and update without having to wait for the next sprint release. Thank you. Man, that's impressive. I didn't even have to get to the squealing tires, but you know what? Here's what I, here's what I really like about this, Jason. First off, I'm a service cloud geek, so I really like the fact that you guys work directly in the console and you make it extremely usable. So by looking at the, yeah, the responsive design, knowing that each of those cards that you have will automatically be resized based on, hey, I might have people who are in call centers in different locations, they have different size monitors, all that kind of stuff. This stuff will work exactly the way they need it to so that they will always see the best uh, design. The other side of that is I hadn't seen those Omni scripts before actually, so that was a that was cool to see how you can make those changes and how that's dynamic, so that you can follow each of the processes. I've actually seen the the health insurance uh, industry demo that you guys do, and it is similar to this. It's very very uh, very cool because it's very industry specific and it really helps agents do the things that they need to do quickly and see what they see what they need right there on the screen. So thanks, Jason. Thank you. Jimmy, let's, let's hear what you got for a question from our audience today. All right. We do have a question. Um, when you add in a new field on OmniScript, it, really, it looks like it's overwriting. Can you copy an, an existing and add new fields and save as another script? Basically, this person's looking to build off existing ones versus um, replacing. Great question. And and actually, we have a great solution for that. So you see on the available components, we have OmniScripts. So actually, what you can do is within this OmniScript, save a snippet of code, make it reusable, and now all these here on the left-hand side, you can insert into any new OmniScript you want. So you can have something pre-configured. If for this insured section, you can make this a block and save it, and then reuse it throughout all your different interactions. Awesome. All right. Well, we are very glad that you were here today, Jason. So thanks for that from Velocity. Next up, I'm going to hand over to myself and I'm going to talk a little bit here about Zuora. Zuora empowers businesses to build subscription models that keep customers consistently engaged in long-term relationships. That's, that's the whole idea with the subscription model. I mean, we start with Salesforce.com, same idea. We want long-term relationships. Zora is the largest provider of relationship business management, known as RBM, services. And Zora's cloud-based technologies help companies create relevant and memorable experiences anytime they interact with a customer. They combine the subscription commerce, billing, and finance solutions into a single package. And on top of that, there's an analytical layer that offers real-time insight to each subscriber's identity, as well as the business's overall performance. And it's way more than just subscriptions. It's a whole new world of happy business. Now, you might have thought that I was going to have a Jason here, and I don't. Although, then again, he's got initials, JD. And so JD is with us from Zuora. And I don't know, is it a Jason? Are you going to be an honorary Jason today, JD? I guess it's technically James, but um, I'll, I'll be Jason for now if that's going to make it by a little easier. We'll accept that. So go for it, Jason. <laughs> All right, thanks a lot. So what I'm going to be starting with is that analytical layer that, that, that you mentioned, Josh. So um, it's going to be the uh, Zora, what we call subscriber insights. And this is part of our standalone module solution. But um, it does what it does is it aggregates data from all the different data sources that are touching your customers. And oftentimes, Salesforce.com is going to be in one of those data sources. But the main power that we give you here is this idea of segmenting your customers. Or we can massage the data in group your customers into groups that have common characteristics so that you can be treating them in a tailored way, which is really important when you're trying to make those long-term uh, subscriber relationships last. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to create a quick segment here. And so I'm going to pretend like I'm, I'm maybe a customer success, success manager, and I'm looking at my install base, and I'm going to shop around for uh, customers that I think might be right for an upsell. So what I can do is I can pull in some data from Zora. I'm going to pull in some uh, of the lower tier plans because I want somebody that's got room to be upsold. And I can also pull in some metrics that are going to change over time. This, this particular example is something that's sold by license. So I can pull in my license utilization uh, statistics and maybe I'll find somebody that's used at least half of their licenses up to this point. 
And what you can see has been going on live down here is that I've paired it down to just four accounts. And I can see I've got somebody that's maybe in overages here. They're highly engaged. And so I think Nike is going to be right for an upsell. And this is a segment that I can save. And at any time someone arrives into this segment, I can automatically trigger emails to myself as a CSM or automatic maybe marketing campaigns or something like that. So if I shoot over into uh, Salesforce here, what I can do is I can get into an opportunity. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a quote for that upsell. You know, it's time that they need a few more licenses. And what I'm really going to be doing is amending the current subscription. And that's key here. I'm not going to be losing any of that customer history. I'm not starting a new contract. What I'm doing is I'm pulling in the information uh, from their current subscription, and I'm going to be editing it from there. Uh, this is where I can configure some, some of the contract. I'm just going to shoot through here for the sake of time. But what we're going to find in the next stage is where I see the product that they have. They currently have nine licenses. We've got some volume discounting happening here as well. Um, and as a salesperson, I could go ahead and I can edit all these different prices. But what I'll do, just again for simplicity, is I'll just going to go ahead and double the licenses that they've got. Um, they're going to get a bit of a discount. I think that's going to be nice for them. And uh, on the next page is where we see some of the magic start happening. Again, this is an amendment. I know that the relationship is changing with my customers. So what I see here is the delta metrics now. I'm seeing the change in the monthly recurring revenue. I'm seeing the change in the total contract value. If there's tax, that'd be here as well. But these, this is information native in Salesforce that can be fed into perhaps a sales comp uh, solution, or this is just another piece of information for your report as well. And uh, of course, what we're going to be doing here is um, sending it over to Z Billing, where we're going to be able to take in all the information um, to continue with the, the, the billing and the finance side of things that we really help in the back office so that you can always be... We got to cut oh, sorry, you. Am I done? It's okay, Jay. Oh, I missed, oh, sorry, you, I missed that sound. Oh, no, no worries. All right, you're that's, at that's the... That's really, really what I wanted to show. <laughs> cool. You know what, what I like cool. about it is I was not aware of the, the types of analytics that you guys have behind it because mm -hmm. in this economy where subscription models are all over the place, it's everything from people mowing your lawn to you know so many other different services that we that we participate in and those relationships are so important to know how much people are utilizing those licenses those purchases mm -hmm. that they made with you and I'd never seen that before so that you can pull those together as well as really understanding every time you talk to a customer how much of that are they utilizing and how can you drive revenue the fact that you guys do that in real time and are now mm -hmm. able to that deeper down into other analytics with Salesforce directly, that's pretty cool. So, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Appreciate that, JD. So, Jamanda, let's hear what you got for questions from our audience today for Zora. Just got one more question. Uh, does Zora work with Alrighty. other solutions on the App Exchange? Right, absolutely. And you know that's what's um, so great about being part of the Salesforce ecosystem and when you're native to force.com you get to play with a lot of a lot of other interesting solutions of course you know we could throw out our proposal through a DocuSign or an Echo Sign to do that e-signature you know internally we we're tied in a financial force for our professional services automation and the one thing that I really want to highlight anyone that uh, follows Salesforce knows about kind of your, your CPQ acquisition with Steelbrick and you know that's a partner of ours as well at Zora. You can see I've demonstrated a lot of overlap here, but we integrate with Steelbrick and we do some magic on the back end as well. We can take that information from Steelbrick and still automate that rev rec and do all the finance and billing that's really important on the back end. Very nice. Well, you know, guys, we've had five really good demos today from five partners, but now the time has come when you, the audience, are to tell us. Who do you think wins the demo jam? So Jamanda is sharing with you a survey. And here on GoToMeeting, we would like for you guys, go to webinar, we would like you guys to tell us who you think wins the demo jam today for the coolest demo. And while that voting is going on, Joshua and I are going to run through a few public service announcements around what's going on in the community. Joshua, what do you got? Yeah, well, you know, there's a couple of things going on in the community right now. One of the things that, uh, you know, I, uh, I was listening to the other day is uh, Jared Kingston does this awesome thing called MVP Office Hours. Um, and if you haven't been a part of it, do check it out. It is a time period that happens biweekly where you can register and ask questions live to MVPs.
And when I was listening to his last podcast of the session, he said we're dreaming everywhere. So the next dreaming, um, the Midwest, uh, the um, Southeast uh, dreaming is coming up. So that, and then also um, the Midwest dreaming will be coming up as well. And you know what also is special about those, Joshua, is that I believe, Jamanda, can you confirm this? I think we've got demo jams coming up at those two events as well. That's correct. We do. We have two gem demo jams with Salesforce MVPs hosting them. Um, we've got uh, Southeast Dream in, I believe, the 9th and the 10th of March. And then um, in the summer, we've got Midwest Dream in, in Chicago and uh, Southeast is in Atlanta. And I'm trying to work my way into, let's see, I'm going to, I'd like to head over and do a demo jam over in Europe sometime. Actually, Joshua, I heard that you were at London calling about a month ago and you were doing a demo jam over there. Can you confirm or deny that? <laughs> I can confirm. Man, what a packed audience. You know, this, uh, you know, these demo jams that we are, that we do um, either, you know, in person or virtually are really turning out to be a great thing. Um, and the, the room was like packed out. So um, if you are around in either one of these areas, whether you're in you know, South we, uh, Southeast, Midwest, or you happen to be in Europe, do attend these, uh, these in-person demo jams. They are absolutely amazing and something you don't want to miss. Speaking of events, we've got some world tours coming up as well. Yeah, absolutely. There are going to be some happening. Actually, I'm trying to remember now. You've got New York, you've got Boston, you've got... Do you remember where the other ones are? I mean, I'm just, London, I, never, I think London's in May. I just got that email the other day. It's just coming up around the corner. And we've got Chicago, thing. too, in March. I think that's the next one, March 24. Cool. And nice. then, on top of that, we've got a couple of milestones that Salesforce has recently... Cross, which is more milestones. We had birthdays last time. Now we've got more milestones. What we got going on, Jeff? So we've got the App Exchange has crossed the line of 3,000 applications available, which is amazing. I mean, that's just huge. And we've not even had nearly 3,000 on the demo jam since we've been doing it. But we're we're knocking them down five at a time, so you guys can see what's out there in the App Exchange. So we encourage you to definitely go out and check out all those. The other thing is the Salesforce Success Community. That thing has crossed the 2 million mark, and we've got more than 2 million members in there now. So if you're not familiar with the Salesforce Success Community, it's located at success.salesforce.com, and they have got some amazing content over there. So you can go out and ask a question, look for an answer. Basically, if you, if you want to know anything about Salesforce, this is the place to go because they curate from all kinds of different sources. You've got the answers, you've got the ideas, you've got uh, YouTube, you've got App Exchange, you've got everything is indexed out there so that you can find it. And so that's a great place to go. And don't feel like you have to have answers. Go in there with questions because it is teeming with people who would love to answer those questions for you. Now, here we go. I think we are ready to announce our winner. Mr. Joshua, are you ready? Are you ready, Josh? You know, I really had oh. an actual drum roll. <laughs> I was doing the drum roll and no one could hear me because I was on mute. Epic fail. Yeah. I, I will work on getting an actual drum roll. So today, the Demo Jam winner is New Voice Media. Congratulations. Congratulations. A, New Voice Media. That was a very cool demo, so we really appreciate everybody participating today. And let's tell them about the next coming up. So let's close this out. Joshua, why don't you, why don't you let everybody know what's next? Sure. Uh, so this event is actually done every third Thursday of the month. So thank you so much for participating today. And uh, we look forward to uh, you joining us the next one at the same place, uh, March 17th, 2016. And again, this recording will be available in our YouTube channel within 24 hours. And if you have any other questions or comments and you want to figure out what's coming up, you can always visit us at appdemojam.com. And that would be St. Patrick's Day is our next celebration. So I'm expecting some green backgrounds, a little bit of Irish music. Maybe I'll change it up here, guys. We've we got to celebrate that. That's a, it's a good thing.
Well, thank you all for joining us today. We are excited to, to have you with us. Thanks to all of our participants, to Jamanda, to Joshua. Look forward to seeing you guys next time. Take care. Thank you.